Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast is Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name, because it's all about Jesus and our lives look so different from each other. Our gifts may look so different from each other, but it's all about bringing the glory, honor, and praise back to you in whatever we do today or a month from now. And today we have on professional photographer, Caroline Maxi Fox. Hey, Caroline. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I am fantastic. I love your sweet voice. And just that we're going to get to learn from you today because you're just like, when I think of you, I think of a humble person who is like in it for Jesus. Like whatever you're in, you're in it for Jesus. And you are our wedding photographer. So, and I know you're doing tons of weddings and staying busy and a new mom. So thank you for your time today. Yes, thank you. I'm excited to be here. I don't know if you can tell in my voice, I'm just smiling. <laughs> yes, yes. And so what are you doing now? Like, what are you up to? Give us the skinny on Caroline. Yeah. I mean, well, currently I am um, just right now today on my computer is are the photos from a destination wedding I photographed this weekend oh on a beautiful, idyllic, like private island um, off the coast of Florida uh, yeah. with a really sweet couple. And I have my baby girl sleeping in the other room and her dad is, you know, holding her to... Um, <laughs> to take care of her. We have a really cool, like kind of partnership in that to be able to take care work from home and to be able to take care of her and love on her and watch her do all her fun new things that she's doing every single day. Yeah. Um, And we just bought a house. So we're doing house projects. I, you know, probably have paint underneath my fingernails right now. (laughs) Yeah. How old's your baby? She is just over four months old, four month old baby, new house, photography, destination, You are so busy. Oh my goodness. Or do you feel busy or do you feel like God's just like placing things where they should be? Like it's, you know what I'm saying by that? Like, it's like all working out. I know God is placing things where they should be. And when I was booking kind of my spring, which was extremely busy this year, I was like, I'm having a baby. And but I have just, the Lord has proven to be just so perfect in his um, the way he schedules things that I was like, he's going to be able, I, I know that he is like, he's doing this with a purpose and a plan in mind. Right. Um, I'm still, I would say I'm still kind of in the, the figuring out how to juggle all of those things. I'm right. um, working from home, um, you know, taking care of my baby girl and doing these, doing these things. We luckily have a lot of people that help us. My mom comes three days a week to be able to, um, watch our baby girl. And my husband helps out a lot and we just sort of switch off in that. So we're still figuring that out, but I know that the Lord is, um, he's in that and he knows how that's all going to work out. (laughs) Right. Okay. So you were our wedding photographer. You did an excellent job. We love our photos. I mean, their artwork, they are absolutely artwork. Your title on Instagram says fine art film photographer, wedding plus lifestyle, Florida and destinations saved by grace. I love that. Um, but it is artwork, what you do and you've been doing it for a long time, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How long? I, uh, well, I really decided I wanted to be an artist when I was in kindergarten. Thank you to Mrs. Brooker, my kindergarten teacher who encouraged that. Um, but so I went to college for art and studied in graphic design. And then after I got my master's in design, which really involved photography along the way, I moved back to my hometown in central yes. Florida yeah. and started my lifestyle photography business. And that was 10 years ago. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Okay. I did not realize you'd been a photographer for 10 years and the industry yes. has changed so much. Cause yes. so I do some photography on the side for friends and family and just even being in that Avenue in the last five years, I'd say it's just been crazy. I mean, the industry has changed so much, but I will say like looking at your work, like you've stayed so consistent, just every, I mean, the brand that you have when we got married seven years ago is the same brand that you have today. And why do you think it's just stayed consistent? I, um, I just really think that the consistency is important. You know, Sarah Sandal, I think she's been on this. She's been on Yes. yes, her and I try to do once a year at the beginning of the year, sort of like set goals for the year. Okay. And I just have really, I've, I've known like things, trends can change, things can change. And I just decided really early on, I needed to just get a rock solid 
roots run deep, know what I am doing this business for and who I am serving and just stick to that and don't be pulled constantly because you constantly see different things changing and trends changing. And so just to really develop core values and a core purpose. And uh, it was actually in 2020, the beginning of the year, I finally like really solidified my core values, which were excellence in craft, joy in spirit and faith in everything. Amen. Uh, Faith and that, in everything. Yes. What so does that mean? Just, well, it just means faith in knowing when the Lord brings me a client or a wedding client, that that is someone that he's entrusted to me. And Amen. if they, if he has, you know, a client go to someone else, that is his purpose and his plan in that and having faith in that, just knowing that he's going to provide the schedule that works best for me and the provision that works best for my family and just being just, just at peace in that, knowing that he is in control. Wow. Okay. So I work in sales, you know, full-time in insurance and what you were saying about that God brings those clients to you. I mean, that's something that I think about all the time. It's like, I want to serve the client to the best of my ability, but I also want to pray for the client who's coming in. Like, who is this person? God, you know, their heart, bring me the person that you want me to serve. And so Wow. Okay. For whoever is listening, whatever career you have, can you walk us through maybe how you pray for your client or pray for new clients? Because it's something that we should do, right? I mean, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, sort of like just knowing from the beginning that this is a, this is um, something that the Lord has established and the Lord has set up and just being able to really focus on that and just pray. I mean, I do a lot of weddings. And so just praying over the day that he would be present there, um, that his presence would be known. And, and even if it's not necessarily a couple that, you know, has brought the Lord into the ceremony, but ceremony, but just to know, like they're bringing him into the ceremony by bringing me there yes, <laughs> like, so okay. that I am there and, yes. and I am able to, to be that, be that light for him there. And so just mm-hmm. being really prayerful over marriages and that way, and knowing that it's not just about the wedding day. Um, and for families, just, uh, I've been able to capture fam- some families for the 10 years that I have been here and just watch yes. their kids grow. And that yes. is such an honor and so cool. And so just to be able to be a part of their lives and, and watch that and continue to pray for them is really cool too. Yes. Okay. So your humble spirit, I mean, we just have to capitalize on this. Whoever's listening right now, you're listening to someone who has a humble spirit, not me. No, I'm talking about Caroline. Caroline is like, she's got the spirit of God with her when she is on these shoots. I just remember when we were at, you know, our wedding, you're capturing it. You are moving like a swift bird. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying it's like a whisper and you're like there and then you're there and you're just like, you're there, and but you're very humble in spirit. And so I just think the way you move during a ceremony is just a reflection of your character because you are humble in spirit. And before this interview, I was reading Philippians two verse three, where it just, and I'll read verse four as well. Cause it, applies to the same, but it's saying, do nothing from selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Verse four, let each of you look not to only his own interest, but also to the interest of others. I know that you're hired to go to a shoot, to shoot people. Like you're there to capture them, but you are looking out for their own interest of like capturing them in the most beautiful ways. And so the spirit that you have, can you walk us through how you prepare yourself mentally to just go into either a ceremony or engagement session, whatever you're shooting that day, how do you prepare your mind for that event? Um, well, I like have tears in my eyes right now, Ricky, because the verse you just read is, uh, and I know at the end of your podcast, you ask like, what is a verse that's really like important in your life right now? And it is written down in front of me right now, Philippians Stop. two, three, and four. Stop <laughs> like, it. Stop yes. It. Like, and when you talk about humility, I feel, um, it's, it's hard to hear that. Cause you're, cause you're thinking like, am I that? And because that is the goal. And, and even after four, it says, have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus. Like that, yes. that is Christ Jesus. And so I, I know that 
that is something that my husband and I also, another part of my job, we lead a Bible college. He's the director yes. and we're the, the site coordinators for that. And that's something that we try to really pour into the students and the people that we're ministering to under us, um, having that spirit of humility. So to hear that is humbling. Like to hear that from yes. you, that, that that's something that you see and feel because it is a daily thing that I'm trying to submit Amen. to the Lord and also praying for humility is not a fun prayer. So just recently with really, I felt like the Lord has been bringing me to just focus on that, those verses and Philippians is, I love Philippians. All my life verses seem to come from Philippians, but it's great. Yeah. Uh, and something recently that he brought to my mind was in, when he says, but in humility, consider one another as more important um, than yourselves. I, I always had read that as in humility, consider others as more important than yourself. And uh, reading that more recently, it's saying one another. So it's include, it's not saying diminish yourself completely, uh, but it's saying the the unity of us as a whole is more important than just yourself. Can you say and, that again? Like say the scripture part? The scripture part is um, in Philippians 2, 3, it says, but with humility, consider one another as more important than yourselves. Just considering the, the unity um, that us together are more important than just yourselves. And I think especially within this past year, where we've all been kind of shut into our own homes and, right. and we, it, uh, within our homes, uh, I think self looms larger and we can become so much more focused on our own needs and our, our own self and our own wants and our own hurts and our own things that we can oftentimes forget about one another. I, I think that humility and the selflessness is one of the greatest gifts of marriage. You right, have right. to be selfless in marriage. You, you have do. to be sacrificial. Yes. Um, and it's one of the greatest gifts of parenthood, which I'm figuring out. Um, it's the hard, it's hard things, but right. it is one of the coolest things because it is, because ultimately is shaping and molding you to look more like Christ. Right. It, oh my goodness. Amen. Sister, I'm literally walking through this right now with Tim Keller. He, Pastor Tim Keller, do you know who that is? Yes. Okay. He has a marriage series out right now on his podcast and it is amazing. Do you listen to his podcast? I don't, I should. So everything you just said, he just spoke that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. He just yeah. talked about that. So yeah, he's Bible preaching guy. Um, but yeah, he actually has a quote and I, I wrote it down here. So I'm going to read it. Um, but it talks about like a selfless love. I mean, you know, a marriage is a commitment. Um, and, and this is his direct quote. Okay. Pastor Tim Keller. He said, love is a commitment first. Love is a commitment to serve people first. Love is an action first. That leads to feelings, not a feeling that leads to actions. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? It's not a yes. feeling that leads to actions. It's not, you know, hey, baby. <laughs> yeah. It's like literally an action. Serving people is an action. Yeah, that is incredible. I know. It's just it's seeing that actually play out um, just in marriage and in parenthood and in business is one of the coolest things because it's, it's hard. It's so hard to <laughs> be selfless. It's so counterintuitive. It's so against, um, just our sinful human selves, but right. it is just so cool to actually be able to experience the peace that comes from that. Exactly. And, um, yeah, just, just know that it is shaping us to look more like Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Shaping us to look more like Christ, shaping us, shaping us like, yes, our spouse, he sees what is going on. He sees, yeah. you know, I mean, he's the leader of the household. Like he, oh my goodness. Beautiful. Okay. The other question I wanted to ask you, and I guess it would be kind of personal, but I feel like you would, you're an open book with this. So I'm sure you, it's not a problem, but, um, your relationship with Christ after you've had a child, can you tell us how maybe that has changed or just how it's been different being a mom um, compared to before a child, your relationship with Christ? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, well, first of all, I, I remember like there were several moms, including Sarah Sandal, who I had mentioned before that I had talked to where she talked about just the time you spend with Christ, like yes. might look different where you used to be able to sit for an hour in the morning. Now it is, it looks different, but to be able to 
or you're spending time with Christ all the time, but to be able to find that time to really focus on him. And I, 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 it took me a little while to find where that was going to be. And I've started just pulling up whenever, um, I'm doing a nighttime feeding, like in the, in the right. early morning, you know, before the sun is rose or as it's rising, just being able to get in his word and know that I'm all, I'm going to have that at least for a while, that time, that is the time they've been able to find with it. Yeah. Um, and secondly, just knowing just when I talk about faith and everything, and, um, I have been open to just about our story. We struggled to conceive for several years, um, we experience, experience miscarriage and that, um, and I have just been really so blown away. Like we, we had labels on this process that was infertility or delayed fertility or, you know, struggling to conceive in that way. Uh, but when my baby girl arrived, I, I realized it wasn't, it, it wasn't that it wasn't those labels, but it was literally us waiting for her. Like he had her in mind. And even though like we were sad every single month, like when, because we desired a child and we wanted a child and, and we, you know, felt like that was the path that he was leading us on. And every month we were, you know, our, our, we were crushed in the midst of that, but we were waiting for her. There's no other way that we could have arrived at my daughter, Nora. And now when I look at her, that's just a constant reminder of that. And it, rem it reminds me, I'm able to you know, I'm speaking to people now that it's like, I know you're in the middle of this thing, but the Lord has something in mind. And, and it's yeah. hard. It's hard to be in the midst of it. It's really hard to be in the midst of it. Um, but it just strengthens your faith whenever you're walking through that with the Lord and you're seeing his, his provision, his blessing, his, his thing that you are waiting for in that. When you said the Lord has something in mind, I just feel like somebody listening to this might be walking through something that's difficult. It could be small or it could be big, but the Lord has something in mind. And when you said that, I just need you to dive in deeper because it's like the hopeful phrase of the Lord has something in mind. You know what I mean? Like where, yeah. where's the hope in that? Like, how can we tangibly yeah. hold on to the words? The Lord has something in mind, you know? It's easy to talk about things on the other side when you're holding the baby that you have been praying for for years. Um, when you are in the relationship that you, or your heart desired for a long time, when you like ha whatever it may be, it's it's easy to talk about it, but it's harder to talk about these things and really surrender them to um, the Lord when you're in the midst of it. Uh, and I just felt like the Lord was specifically with you know, with our struggle with infertility, he was really calling me to, to talk about the mess, like talk about that, that middle part. And I actually had spoke at a, at a women's event in the beginning of December of 2019, where I did, I brought it up. I said, here's the messy middle. This is where I'm standing right now. It doesn't have a bow on it. I'm not holding the baby in my arms, but what the Lord is teaching me in this is to just be faithful in the process to just rely and relax and have peace, knowing that he is at work and that he has a, a plan that is going to be played out in our lives. Like if we are surrendered to him and just really, just really dialing in to the Holy spirit. I think that is one of the biggest things that he taught me about that is that he has put his Holy spirit in us who is a part of Jesus and is a part of God and yes. Jesus and God, like all of them, they know the will of the Lord and that is Amen. in us. So to be able to just be praying in a way that is tapping into this spirit that is in us that already knows his will. And there's just such a peace that is, that is in that, even though you don't, you can't see it and you don't understand and you don't, you don't know, but his spirit is in you that does know, and that can give you the peace for the moment. And that can give you the strength that you need when you're weak. And that can give you, um, all of those things that you need to just be able to rest in the arms of Jesus when you're in the middle of that messy middle. And when you're in the middle of the unknown. Yes. Okay. So I've got to know this from you. GCBI, that's who you all yes. work with. Um, Great Commission Bible Institute, right? Yes. So amazing program. My husband actually loves Pastor Randy. He like yeah. listens to all this stuff, has it downloaded on a zip drive, like listens, listens, listens. Like he's just like tuning in to whatever he's saying because he's so scripture focused, Bible focused, mm -hmm. just like intelligent, so intelligent, like crazy intelligent. So you've been studying underneath him. And when you were just talking about the power of God, like, I think I can learn something from you in that. 
like, I'm going to ask you a huge question, but I just feel like you, I don't know, talking about the power of God, what, like, what is the power of God? Because we know that he can do anything. We know he made everything. We know that he thought about us before we even existed, like before the foundation of the earth. Like we know that he is a good father, but like, I just love pastor Randy and GCBI and everything you guys are doing there to teach people who come in. It's a Bible school, you know, to teach them about God. So what could you tell us just about the mighty power of God? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Great Commission Bible Institute is awesome. My husband and I have been uh, leading this for, really, it's my husband. I say that he's the director. I'm, you know, his, like his support in that. And I am responsible for discipling the girls in the, in the program. And now awesome. we have an incredible leadership team that we get to come alongside and really grow in like ministry leadership in that way. Right. Uh, and it's, it is just a 10 months of studying the word. It yes. is the Bible from cover to cover. We start off the year uh, with just getting in a room together and reading the Bible from cover to cover as fast as we can. I think it takes about seven to eight days for that. And then they spend the rest of the year studying it, really dialing in and, and studying into um, what the original context was, the original meanings and how that applies to our life today. Amen. And awesome. I will say like, the power of God is in his word. Yes, <laughs> like, it is preach. so you can, you can make it a textbook and you can study in that way, but it is like, it is alive yes. and it speaks to you right now. Just as you brought up the same exact verse I have written in front of me, that is my life verse today. Like the Lord speaks through that. He is alive and how he is alive in it and how there's been so many times where I've, I've just cried out to the Lord saying, Lord, I, I, I need you right now. I need to hear you right now. And instantly scripture pops to my mind, Amen. pops into my mind. That is exactly what I needed in that moment. And I wouldn't have had that if I wouldn't have taken the time to be in his word and memorize his word. And so, memorize his word. Yeah. Because yeah. we have to meditate on it. It's one thing yes. to have it written down, you know, like I have some scriptures written down, but when it's in our memory and it comes up at the time when we need it, like that is what moves mountains. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And there, and I, I never was, I, for a long time in my life, I never was a person that did the sticky notes on the mirror sort of thing. Um, I just, I don't know, visually, maybe for me, I didn't like the idea of those, those colors being on my mirror every morning when I was right. <laughs> getting ready, but Right. Um, there, like, there just came a point in my life where, um, you know, also divorce is part of my story. I've walked through the, you know, the tragedy of broken marriage. And I know that, um, that is something that is, has been a long process of me with the Lord in that. And there was, I was just needing to cling to so much of his truth and his goodness in that. And I, so I started to write things on little white note cards. And that's literally what I have in front of me right now, because I just I, visually, I like that a lot better. <laughs> right, right. And so that was just putting that scripture in front of me to be able to uh, just constantly be referring to it. Um, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 was a, a life verse for me. And it's do not call to mind the former things or ponder, ponder things of the past. Behold, I am doing something new. I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And I had to just repeat that, meditate on that over and over and over again, just the promise of the Lord doing something new that he is present and he has a way in the wilderness that he has a stream in the desert. Um, Philippians four, six, and seven have been life yes. verses before that I have literally, when I am anxious, it is be anxious for nothing. And, and I pray through that verse over and over and over again, until the peace of God, God which surpasses Amen. all understanding is guarding my heart. Right. And it is just, a, I cling to it and in that way. And so it's like, that is just one way that helps me be able to memorize it because I know it's going to be life-saving down Amen. the road. And, and just like I said, he, I feel, I felt just like I was in Philippians and, and just really started meditating on Philippians two, three, and four. And just that, that whole, just Philippians two in general. Um, I'm, I'm normally Philippians four girl. Those were my life verses and, and, um, just verses for my business have been coming from before in Philippians four, eight verses uh, for your business. Oh okay. yeah. That was, I love that. <laughs> yes. You have verses. I mean, yes. So this is like a challenge because 
I have never thought about having verses for my business. Like I've always thought yeah. about it for, you know, me as a person, like I am a person, but a part of me is my business, you know, I mean, obviously like surrendered the business to the Lord, Lord, yeah. use it how you will, but focusing on scripture in your biz, like as a part yeah. of your business. Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Walk us through this <laughs> because this is like a challenge. I've never thought to pair scripture with my business, but so yeah, yeah. walk us through that, please. Well, I just, um, I just was figuring out with, with, like I said, these, these, these things that Sarah and I would do at the beginning of the year, we'd really like focus on looking at the past and looking at our future for business and, and what is the Lord calling us to in that. Uh, I, I just really realized like photography for me is pointing my camera at the goodness that the Lord has placed in front of us. And like specifically writing down like my core purpose for my business is here at Caroline Maxi Photography, by pointing our lenses and hearts at the right things, we long to encourage people to truly see, to inspire a thoughtful curiosity, to shift their gaze to the things of beauty mm-hmm. in the marvelous and in the mess, and to sing praise to the maker of it all. Amen. And that really comes out of the core business verse for me, which is Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. And that is what I see and and strive towards when I'm taking pictures. I am pointing my camera and trying to point my camera at those things because Mm -hmm. It's all like everything's there, the marvelous and the mess and the crazy, but the Lord, it has these things that are true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, of good repute, excellent. All of those things are in front of us too. And that we can really just change our whole heart and our whole perspective by where we shift our gaze and where we have our gaze. Well, you're shifting it on the right things. Um, You know, for those who are listening, you know, Caroline and I know this, but Um, one of my grandmothers was at our wedding and she passed Mm -hmm. away. Um, but there's a photo that you took of her and she's just like praising the Lord, like her hands Mm -hmm. are up and she was always seeking after God and she just was amazing. And, Mm -hmm. um, you captured that, like you captured. And I, I can see the photo. I, I remember it, um, because it was such an incredible moment. Like, I just think the Lord was so present there and, I can see it. Yes. Oh my goodness. Like, I love you. You guys, if y'all are looking to get photos done, family photos, like all the things like advertisement, Caroline, Maxi photography, like just go there. I love your spirit. I mean, can we take those things that you just told us about today and apply them to our business, to our life, to whatever we're doing, you know, whatever we do, let's do it for the glory of God. And some of the things that you told us about, like sitting down and making goals and putting scripture with your business, making a mission statement from that verse, from that verse, you said, sing praise to the maker of it all at the end. It's like, yes. And rejoice like, and sing praise in our work for God, for his glory. So is I want to ask you, what's your favorite Bible verse helping you in this season? But I feel like you already answered that. So is there anything else you'd like to share with us? I mean, I, I just think that I constantly have to be reminded of these things. And that is why I, I, I'm constantly going back to the scripture to be reminded when my, when my gaze shifts from the things that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and of good repute and excellent and praiseworthy and all of those things, like I have to be reminded to shift back. And so um, just to know that it is a continual process and that, that it's okay if your, um, if your focus does get shifted to the mess, but to be able to know that the Lord is present there too. Um, and to be able to just, just look for that, be constantly looking for that. And, um, I want to be praying for you and praying, continuing to pray for myself and my own family to be doing these things and to know that our walk with him is a just continual process and, um, something that, we can find joy and delight in all along the way. Be constantly looking for that. Yeah. And you have been consistent through that. You're constantly looking for that. And through that, we're seeing a consistent heart to Christ. So, I mean, you've been to a ton of places. <laughs> we didn't even try. We didn't even talk about your traveling uh, with. Oh, yeah. Like we didn't even go there, but I'm just going to encourage you who's listening 
carolinemaxi.com slash blog. Um, you, you went to Israel, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. We went to Israel. With GCBI, Pastor Randy does tours there. I think Israel's opening back up for tours now. Okay. So um, an incredible experience because that's yes. another thing that you study the word, but then to be like walking down the paths where these things took place is like something just completely different and so cool how it comes alive in that way. So That's that cool. was an amazing yeah. trip to be able to do that. So amazing. And I've written about that on my blog too, just all the things the Lord taught me about that there. So I love it. Yeah. Your blog's beautiful. And just the pictures you took while you were there. Thank you so much for your time. And again, that um, verse that you mentioned before for people who are wanting to know the scripture that's on your heart this season at the end is Philippians two verses two through four, correct? Yes. Well, let me see. Okay. Three through four is what I'd written down. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's I'm sure so all crazy. of Philippians two, just go ahead and read all of Philippians two. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. The word of God is alive. And I've yes. learned that from this episode today. So thank you so much. Um, your Instagram is at Caroline Maxi photo. And then we just mentioned your blog. So is there anything else that, you know, any other ways that we can connect with you? That's easy to get in touch. Um, yeah, just Instagram is a great way. My, my website and my blog is a great way too for that. And I, yeah. So I'm, I, I love what I do. I feel like humbled and blessed that people invite me into their stories to be able to tell them. And I, um, yeah, just, just reach out. Let's, let's chat, let's connect. And, um, I have so enjoyed being on here, Ricky, and I'm like such an honor to be able to photograph your wedding and to call you a friend. And I just thank you for this thing that you're doing. It's, it's really incredible. And like, I, I told you before we started recording, I just felt weepy because I know that the Lord is present in this thing that you are doing. I feel weepy right now because we talked about <laughs> Nanny and just like yeah. the behind the scenes story of like how that picture came into fruition was like, yeah. you were focused on God's goodness. So I'm just like uh, torn to pieces right now, yeah. but um, yeah. I just know that it's God and he is alive and he fills places in us that we didn't know that we needed. And he just fills it, you know, just being open to him. Like you were talking about earlier, it never ends. It never ends with just like knowing that he's there and present. So thank you so much, Caroline. And at the end of every podcast, ah, sorry. Ah, I love you. <laughs> thank you so much. At the end of every podcast, we always pray, Lord, that we decrease and God, you increase in our lives. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy, Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys, and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs>